All right, so Amy sent a quick message saying that I didn't have anything showing how to use StatCrunch to use the binomial, and so I wanted to go ahead and show you guys that in a quick video. We'll go through this again on class on Friday, and in fact on Friday I have that worksheet, um, but I'm actually, I've rewritten it to be a Desmos activity that like gives you a check mark when you've gotten things correct, so that way you can, as you're going through the worksheet, know that you're on the right track. Um, but I did want to show you how to tackle a question like exercise one uh, that we had in the lecture notes. Uh, using StatCrunch instead of the formula and instead of the calculator. So um, once you have your P and your N and you know that you're dealing with something binomial, we can go to StatCrunch. Whoop. Sign in, of course, with our Mesa 119. Um, and then when you open StatCrunch, one of the options in here is under stat calculators and this will do everything that we need for part five so we're going to do a binomial calculation i really love stat crunch over the graphing calculator uh, over the ti36x um, because it has this visual on top of everything else so we look back at that question we were playing with or we looked at in this example 75 percent was our p our random selection was 15. So we had 15 independent trials, 15 randomly selected adults that we were looking to see uh, whether or not they had this success, right? The number of them that knew somebody who had become addicted to a drug other than alcohol. So let me pull back up StatCrunch. I'm going to put in that 15 for my N. That's 0 0.75 for my P. And here's where StatCrunch is awesome. I can do any of the types of probabilities I want, greater than, less than, uh, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, and an equal to. I can do any of them, uh, whereas the calculators are limited to um, CDF only giving you uh, the less than or equal to if you have the 83 or 84. Uh, some of the newer calculators allow you to choose a range, um, but it's, it's, it's pretty rare. So if I look at this, the first question here says, what's the probability that exactly six, oops, exactly six people know someone who's become addicted? So the only outcome, if I'm going to translate this, the, and the only work you need to show on a question like this, you definitely need to say I'm using the binomial calculator. I'm sorry, I'm on my bad screen. I'm using a mouse. Uh, is that the probability x is equal to six? And then you can come over here to stat crunch, not that, to stat crunch. And you can go ahead and say we need six and we need an equal to. And there you've got your answer, 0 0.0034. So you're just going to go ahead and put that on the, the uh, answer sheet, right? This is going to be terrible if you get to watch me you write with a mouse. And if you want something with a direction, I still recommend that you write out the list of values like I did before, or you have some sort of way to translate these. Maybe you find a, a list online. At least is a way to write a greater than or equal to. For a lot of people, that's not necessarily intuitive, so it's always nice to have a quick little, like, drawn-out table, at least 21 to go to the bar, so that's 21 and up, so 14 and up. Um, but if you have that little drawing, right, the little list as I like to do it, oh, this is going to be terrible. One, two, dot, 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 14, 15. Hopefully, you circle these two. And then the nice thing is you get the same visual when you do the stat crunch piece of this. So when I come to stat crunch and I say, okay, now it's 14. Oops. Now it's 14. And I want greater than or equal to 14. I can see 14 and 15 turned red. So that matches up with the ones that I circled, 14 and 15. And I'm able to just grab the value straight off the stat crunch, 0 0.0802. So that's all the stat crunch pieces. We're going to do this in class with a, a Desmos activity. Like I said, it's the same as that worksheet, um, but this will give us a chance to practice. And really the hard thing is, is reading those keywords. And some of them get a little more challenging, especially when we talk about things like not all things that we can't just throw uh into our typical like oh at least is a you know at, at, we know at least is a greater than or equal to symbol uh, but not all is not one that falls into that category so we have to come up with something a little more clever and think critically about what we're doing in that particular question so that's a preview of what we're doing on Friday we're going to be playing with StatCrunch I'll give you guys a review of this I'll, I'll go through an example and then we'll be doing a ton of exercises for it